Hello everyone, Arctic here, and this week we're going to be covering the 10 best Star Wars games of all time. Now, when I went into this, I completely forgot exactly how many Star Wars games there were, and in case you're like, yo, like, in disbelief that there's a lot, go look it up. There's like over a hundred. There's so many of them. It's scary. <laughs> and some good. And some bad. <laughs> and some, well... Yeah. So, here we go on to the ten best. Number ten. Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds was released November 11th, 2001. It got an expansion May 14th of 2002 and was a real-time strategy game. You know, kind of like uh, Warcraft or Starcraft or most of those games. It was an RTS, which is kind of weird when you think about it for Star Wars. I mean, not that this didn't spawn a couple other RTSs in the Star Wars universe, but still. Um, it was really positively received, which is part of the reason why there are more RTSs, and had campaign as well as online multiplayer. Yes, and it was basically, it was a lot like taking Warcraft or Starcraft and just putting Star Wars in it. Number nine, Super Star Wars, which is released November 1st, 92. Yes. 92. Old game. NES game, technically. Um, in North America, it was December for Japan, and Europe had to wait till April. April 2nd to be, you know, specific. Um, <laughs> sad for them. Poor guys. Had to wait and hear about it. Well, no, it was in the 90s. They didn't really have to read about it online. Imagine that. Um, it was a side-scrolling platformer, kind of a run-and-gun. Basically, a lot like Mario, except with guns and stuff like that, and probably taller, but still. It was... It was an old school. Um, it was re-released re for the PS4 and Vita in November of this year. Pretty much just like, you know, hey look, all the Star Wars stuff is coming back, so let's go ahead and re-release all the Star Wars stuff. Um, it was labeled the best movie to game in 92 by um, Electronic Gaming Monthly. So, yeah. Given the fact that we're, you know, saying movie to game and it came out like 20 years after... Not 20 years, 15 years. Still, the whole fact it came out that much after kind of gave them time to perfect it. Number 8. Star Wars. Jedi Knight. Dark Forces. This, well, Dark Forces 2. Ha, <laughs> oops. Anyways, this game was released September 30th of 97. Um, it was a sequel to Dark Forces, obviously, um, which, and was released for Windows, and was released for Steam in 09. Um, it even had an online multiplayer and lots of wonderful stuff. It's, you know, just part of this Star uh, Jedi Knight series. Not a lot to say about it. Number seven. Speaking of the Jedi Knight... My fault. Number seven. Speaking of the Jedi Knight series, here we have Jedi Knight 2. Jedi Outcast. Um, this game was released March 26th of 2002. It was released for Windows, Mac, and GameCube, as well as Xbox. Um, had multiplayer and single player, kind of like the others. Uh, used the Quake 3 Team Arena engine. Um, it was the second to last game to be released in the um, Jedi Knight franchise. Um, it even had a, had a level editor and stuff like that. It was really cool. Shaders and mods and stuff. Oh my gosh. The internet was really taking this game. Early internet. Prehistoric internet. Pre-YouTube. Number six. Now to handle a much more recent game. Star Wars The Old Republic. Yes, the MMO, which was released December 20th of 2011. It debuted, well, not really debuted, but by February after uh, release, it hit 1.7 million subscribers. That's where it peaked. Thinking it was going to catch up with World of Warcraft's 12 million record. Huh. Morons. <laughs> but it dropped about 400,000 subscribers in three months. And then dropped again to a million in, um, by June. And so it was like, okay, yeah, we'll go free to play. And they have over a million active players still playing. It's got five expansion packs. And so it's doing fairly well for a four-year-old game. Number five. Rogue Squadron 2. Rogue Squadron leader because we had to have a rogue squadron game on here 
Um, it was released November 9th, 2001. Does anyone notice the fact that a lot of these Star Wars games, like that, the, the high for releasing Star Wars games is from like 98 to 2002? You get to play as Luke and Wedge. Um, and you spend most of the time flying, facing the Empire. You get to fly seven ships, ranging from the X-Wings to the Millennium Falcon, A-Wings, stuff like that. Um, it was the seventh best-selling game of um, November 2001, and was the second best for GameCube during its launch, selling faster than all of the previous Star Wars games, and probably contributed a lot to why we got the Battlefront series. Mainly the flying part for, like, Battlefront 2. Um, not so much the, you know, FPS aspects of it, but still. Number four. Speaking of the Battlefront series, Star Wars Battlefront 2. I know a lot of people might complain that I'm not putting Battlefront on here, the one that came out, like, last month, but it just came out last month, and you're going to expect something that, you know, a game that lasted a decade with rabid fans still around it, to lose to one that's only been out for a month. And I'm sorry, it's just it's hard for me to make that call. But at least Battle, you know, Battlefront made the list with Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 is one of the most popular Star Wars games ever. Um, and as we just discussed, the sequel finally came out last month. But when they shut down the servers for, you know, like GameSpy last year, Everybody was, like, freaking out. In fact, that was part of the reasons why they got, like, another two months on it was just strictly because they didn't want to shut it down. When Xbox shut it down, they were still the number two community, literally only behind Halo. So, oh my gosh, when I say a popular franchise, I mean no one wanted to let this die. Um, on Steam, I believe it is uh, second only to... Uh, um, CSGO. So, yeah. Or at least it was at a time. Number three. Star Wars. Dark Forces. Which was released February 28th of 95. Um, it was re-released for Steam in 2009 along with a lot of the others that got re-released for Steam. Um, and it also got put on PSN in 2010. Uh, it uses the Jedi Game Engine which was custom made just for it. Hence the fact it was called the Jedi Game Engine. Um, yeah, they named it that way. Oh my gosh, what nerds. Um, it started the Jedi Knight series, which lasted until, I think, 2005? Maybe a little late, more than that. But, I mean, seriously, I mean, that's the biggest reason it made number three, is it kick-started a f series that I strongly remember. There's five games in the series. I mean, so you think it spawned a five-game series, and even then, when it ended, it didn't really end because it was, like, you know, not doing well. It ended more just because, well, yeah, it just ended. I don't know why they didn't continue it, apart from the fact that Disney's closed down the studio since then. Sad. Number two. Now, this one might get disputed a little bit, but Force Unleashed. Now, Force Unleashed, in my opinion, has one of the best stories of a Star Wars game ever. And, in uh, it was released September 16, 2008. Beautiful physics, beautiful gameplay, everything about it was beautiful, and it's the fastest-selling Star Wars game to date. I don't know if it still holds that up against Battle, uh, the new Battlefront, uh, but up until then, it still had been. 7 million copies sold by February of 2010. I mean, seriously, it's just, oh my gosh, it was, uh, the sequel was good, it just was short. Um, that Really, that's a big complaint with the sequel, was like, oh, I beat it an hour and a half. But, the story, the gameplay, the choices, everything about that game was just beautiful. The fact you could blow things apart, you could pick someone up and slam them into the ground, or throw them in the air and watch them ragdoll. Um, you could actually grab a hold of a storm tro uh, stormtrooper or a, a rebel, and they would like grab onto the railing, and you could pull and tug against them and rip them away from the railing as they fought for their life not to be ripped away by the force. I mean, seriously, it was beautiful. Okay, maybe I might have gotten a little brutal and sadistic when I used to play that game, because that was like one of my favorite things to do, is grab someone with a jetpack, move them over to something so I could grab it, and then just like, you know, try and throw them. Grab someone in the air with a jetpack and slam them into the ground. Oh, I miss that game. 
Number one. Okay, this one falls into number one for multiple reasons. In fact, I would almost be crucified by so many fans if this didn't make number one. You may dispute it, but a lot of people won't. It is the most popular, might not be the fastest selling, it might not be the most selling, but it's still the most popular and talked about Star Wars game of all time. Knights of the Old Republic. And because it is so popular and I don't want to try and argue which one is better, I'm putting both Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 in the number 1 slot strictly because it's too hard to say. Um, the first one was released in 2003 and was re-released on Steam in 2009 along with a lot of Star Wars games. It was just like the whole, like, here, put the entire library up there. The sequel was released December 6, 2004, literally a year later. Um, holy king cow. Um, it was made by Bioware. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it is the most talked about. Um, Star Wars game ever. It used the D20 D&D system for uh, the mechanics and how it did everything from your stats and all that other stuff. So it played a lot like Neverwinter Nights except with Jedis and lightsabers and stuff like that. It was made by Bioware. Basically they were given the option of making an episode 2 game or make a game set 4,000 years in the past so they could write everything they wanted. And we know what they picked and we're glad because Clone Wars wasn't that good and it wouldn't have sold nearly as well if they'd made a Clone Wars game. But anyways, this, in my opinion, is the top 10 Star Wars games of all time. You may dispute the order. You may dispute which games. You may feel another game should have been there. Feel free to let me know what you think should have been the list. In fact, you can give me your entire depiction of what the list should have been down in the comments below. I would love to read it. If you have a, a suggestion for something I should cover in another 10 video, feel free to put it in the, you know comment section. I do facts. I do opinions. I mean, you can give me anything. Pick a game. Pick something. Anyways, if you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, you might want to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any cool videos I have coming out. And until next time, you have fun. I will see you next time. Bye!